When you've given all you've got When you've done your very best You know you have a brighter future Much more than all the rest You finally got it made A motorboard on your head A sleek looking gown, a diploma in your hat Aren't you proud, aren't you feeling grand? The talk of the time I'm glad it's over I finished my paper trees I bagged all my B's and A's In this frenetic game The B.A. owners The price for those crazy years that puts me above my peers To glory and fame You finally got it made I'm on a board on your hand A sweet looking gown, a diploma in your hand Aren't you proud, aren't you feeling grand? The talk of the town
So Ed, how does it feel to be the talk of the town? Sure, you've got your future made. You've won the National Oratory Contest. You've got great talent. You'll be a very good lawyer someday. But Ed, is that what you really want? Jim, we've been through this before. You've made up your mind to be a missionary. But that's not for me. I've worked hard to get here, and I'm not about to give it all up. And I'm not giving up on you, Ed. You know that one day, I pray that you'll join me as a missionary. Jim, I'm sorry. I've made up my mind. Listen, young man, before you throw your life away For a dream that can never come true A dream that some idealistic fools have long pursued All in vain The world is here, the world is now It's yours, you have so much to gain Listen, young man, before you throw your life away For a cause that can never be won A cause that some misguided fool has planted In your brain Why risk it when you stand to lose? So think, my young man Think again So think, my young man Think again Cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool. He is no fool who gives what he can never. I gain the world and all that it's worth and lose my soul in exchange. I'd be a fool to lose it all for what will soon pass away. I
Ms. Betty Howard, I've noticed your absence at our missions meetings. Have you decided on another course of career? Mr. President of the Foreign Missions Fellowship, I would have you know that I'm still interested in missionary work. I was not at the recent meetings for some personal reasons. <laughs> it's all right, Betty. I know you won't change your mind. Because if there's anyone as passionate about missions as me, well, it's got to be you. <laughs> well, coming from Jim Elliott, that has to be a compliment. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Jim. Oh. I have to run. I'll be seeing you around. Yeah, see you around. Oh, Miss Betty Howard, why can't I get you out of my mind? Falling in love was not something that I had planned to do. And all oh, the joy it was to discover that Betty felt the same way as I did. But the same joy was marred by the knowledge that God was seemingly calling us to serve Him in two different lands. For years, I knew that Ecuador was where the Lord wants me to be. And Betty knew too with the same conviction that Africa was where she was to be. South America. Africa, how could our paths converge? Done now. Thank you, Betty. We're so glad you've come to spend Christmas with us. You've been such a great help. You're most welcome, Mrs. Elliot. Well, Betty, Jim tells me you specialize in linguistics. How very interesting. Mrs. Elliot, I have always been interested in the translation of languages. And that's part of my preparation to become a missionary. Yes, of course. Betty, I know my son thinks highly of you, and I would be so grateful if you could convince him to take up that good offer to teach at that fine Christian high school in Oklahoma. It is a respectable job, and his father and I would be so proud of him. Mrs. Elliot. I just I... got a letter from a missionary called Dr. Tidmarsh from Ecuador. He's working with the Quechua Indians in a place called Shandia. Oh, his wife is ill, and he needs someone to replace him in his work there. He has asked another missions group to help, but they can't. If nobody replaces him, it would mean years of work wasted. Well, that's all very interesting to know. I'm sure the good Lord will find the right person to help this man. Come, let's see what your father's been up to all this while. Jim, I know how you feel. And you know how I feel about you. Jim, no, I think... Betty, listen to me. The call to go rings clearly in my ears, and I must obey. And now it seems as if Ecuador is beckoning. Betty, as I have always said, 
I will go as a single man in the will of God. And he has not told me to do otherwise. Yes, Jim. You must obey. And I too must obey. I'm also waiting for God to reveal to me his plan for me. I will go to Ecuador. Betty. Don't say anything, Jim. God will show us his way. Must I choose when each of the choices is equally good in my eyes? Must I choose when one or the other is equally worthy and wise? Must I places that are secret in me. If there's anything that is hindering the clear revelation of your will about Ecuador, show it to me, I pray. And if it is your will for me to go, then send me soon. finally confirmed. I will leave for Ecuador on 2nd February. God has provided me a partner for the work in Shandia. The Fleming family are old family friends, and Pete I've known from childhood. He has decided not to enter the seminary but go to Ecuador with me. I've been learning more about Ecuador too. There is a tribe there known as the Alcas. They are completely cut off from the civilized world. Every attempt to contact them has failed. Betty, that's exactly the kind of work I want to do. My heart goes out to these Alcas, and I know God is leading me to them. Dearest Betty, I'm going at last, but the thought of leaving you behind me tears me. I love you, Betty. Do you love me?
I can hardly help myself, Jim. de Dios. It's the Bible. Hey, Jim. Pete. Shandy is alive again. <laughs> After Dr. Titmush left, we thought we'll not have a school here again. But God sent you. Now the school is running. The children are learning from the Bible. You cannot imagine how happy we are. Venancio, we are happy to be with you too. In fact, we hope to build an airstrip here in Shandia so that more people can be rich for Christ. Yes, and in time, we hope to reach the Alcas too. The Alcas? Haven't you heard? They are the most dangerous tribe in Ecuador. They kill for no reason. And they don't mix with anyone. No Quechua will want to have anything to do with them. Then all the more we must reach them and tell them about the love of Jesus. You, you must be careful. The Alcas are dangerous. You must not go to them. You must stay here with us. <laughs> Anancio, we're not about to abandon you. We know what we're here to do. Yes, to polish our Spanish. Senor, you learn Spanish? Yes, uh, you teach us? Si. Uh, what is one? Uno. And what is two? Dos. And three? Tres. Uno, dos, tres. That's easy. No problem. Come on, try me Come, first. try us. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Ocho, nueve, diez, siete, cincuenta. Si is yes, no is no, no entiendo, I don't know. Si, si, no, 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 ciao, adios, there you go.
can't leave everything behind. No, this is a long time now, Stu. We can't let's go. <laughs> One years of hard work, it's all gone, Jim. is no more where do we go from here hey Jim I've got a letter for you from America gracias it's from Betty my dear Jim you cannot imagine my excitement as I write this I've been asked to help with some language work in Ecuador <gasps> The work is with a small tribe in the Colorados in the Western Ranges. I'm coming, Jim, in two weeks. Yahoo! <laughs> she came today, stepped of an airplane. And watch the feet walk down the steps, looked up at friends and frowned a little. The sun was brighter than the play that made her frown that and did not see me among the Since I got here, I have seen God work in wonderful ways. First, He brings Betty to Ecuador, 
And for the first time, we have spent days together. We have explored many hills around Quito and have had many opportunities to practice our Spanish. And remember Ed McCulley? Well, he's decided that he's not going to be a lawyer after all. He's coming to join us in Ecuador with his new wife, Mary Lou. And mom, that's not all. We have a new mission post to set up here in a village called Puyupungu. Ed and Mary Lou are too inexperienced to start this new work. And Pete is returning to America to get married to Olive. Mom, it's suddenly all so clear to me and Betty. God is opening a way for us to be together. I want you and Dad to be the first to know. In five days, Betty and I will be married. God has blessed us so much for his work, Jim. Yes, 
This is only the beginning. There's so much work to be done here for the Quechuas. And not to mention the Alcas. Only if we can find them, Jim. Have you been in touch with Nate Saint? Oh, yes. I've just talked to him over the radio. He still hasn't found them. You know, these Alcas are masters of camouflage. But you know, Nate is such an experienced pilot. I know. And he has flown over the jungle hundreds of times. And he still has no idea where they are. But Nate is as keen as we are in this. Well, I have informed Pete and Ed that once we spot them, we'll form a team to make contact. Jim, this matter is entirely in God's hands, and we must wait for him to open the way. I'll get the supplies to you as soon as possible. Over. Doing that again, dear? Yes, yes. I think it will work. If I circle the plane at just the right speed, we should be able to keep the basket stationary in one spot. Long enough for them to get things out of it. You really think you can do it? That's a real breakthrough. Once you know where they are, you'll be able to pass things to them. Yes, I think so. Are you in radio contact with the Elliot? Why, oh, yes. I've just spoken to Betty. She's given birth to a girl. Well, give them our congratulations. And while you're at it, tell Jim I've got more good news for him. You found the Alcas? I wish I had. But it's still something Jim Elliot would appreciate. What is it? Well. A young orca girl has fled from her tribe and taken refuge in Don Carlo's plantation in Arayuno. Apparently, the rest of her family was massacred because of a feud in the tribe. She's young, alone, and defenseless. So the Quechuas have taken her in. She's now working in a plantation and has accepted the Lord. That's amazing news. Jim will be thrilled to hear it. Contact. With an alka, at last. We came as soon as we heard. Oh, you must be the one we have heard so much about. What is your name? I am Dayuma. Dayuma. Hello, Dayuma. I am Jim. I have been praying about this for a very long time. God has brought you to us. Yes, I hear that you want to meet my people. Oh, yes, I... You must not try. They will kill you. Brothers and my sisters live 
sorry to hear about what you have been through. We know how difficult it is for you to recall what happened. We know of the dangers, but we still want to meet your people. We believe we could make a difference. Why don't you teach us your language? Teach me. I will come to you every week. Will you teach me? I can see that you are serious. Okay. I will teach you what you wish to know. But you must be very careful. So there I was, flying over the Arayuno, looking for the umpteen time at the dense forest below. But this time, I thought I saw something in the distance. It was just a little patch, but I had a hunch it was more than that. True enough, it was a clearing. You can imagine my excitement when I got closer and found more than a dozen huts. Really? Where? And that's where they are. Hey, Ed, not far from you. <laughs> I'm sure they have Mary Lou and you covered all this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is the game plan. Nate's been practicing this, so we know it's going to work. We're going to tie a rope to a basket and drop it from the plane. In it, we put a machete, gifts like beads and ribbons to show them that we mean them no harm. We're going to do this once every week. Let's see how they respond to this. And if they do, we'll take it as a sign to go in. Yes. Jim's right. We'll take turns to make the flight. And I'll need one of you to control the drop. You'll also have to learn the phrases we've picked up from Dayuma. Here, Marge has made copies for each of you. 
Okay, it's time to learn some Alka phrases. <laughs> First phrase, bitty mitty panamapa. Again, bitty mitty panamapa. What does it mean? It means I like you. I like you. I like you. I like you. Next phrase. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka. It means I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. Sounds just like the first one. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka. Now practice. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka. Nate. I'm closer to them. Count me in when you're ready to make the flight. I'm ready to, any time. What about you, Roger? You've done a great work with the Javaro Indians. Your experience in reaching a new tribe would be valuable to us. Count me in, too. Looks like we've got a team. To Operation Alka! Operation Alka!
We did it. The basket worked perfectly. Oh, that's fantastic. Tell me what happened. Well, we managed to keep the basket stable enough, and they took our gifts. Praise God. We've been praying for this. Dear, did you see them again today? Yes, we did. Oh, so how did they respond this time? Did they take the clothes? They took everything. Oh. In fact, I think they're expecting us every week now. Barbara, we found a stretch of beach close to their village. And you were able to land the plane there? Yes, and what's more, it's perfect for our base camp. I'll tell you more about it. So, are we finally going to meet them? Do you think they're ready? I think so. The time is right. It's really exciting, Jim. When are we going in? We've set the day. January 3rd, 1956. We're here on Palm Beach. At last, Jim. Yes. Let's start setting up camp. Let's. The rest will be here soon. Oh, God. Wow. The plane's quite safe further down the beach. This looks like a good spot for our camp. What are we waiting for? Let's get cracking. Mitty, Mitty, Panimapa! Guy, Mitty, Ramem Taka! Wow, you're getting started all right. Well, why not? They probably got us covered already. Who knows? They may be watching us right now. Mitty, Mitty, Panimapa! Mitty, Mitty, Panimapa! Guy, Mitty, Ramem Taka! Guys! Over here, look! Footprints. Two sets of them. They have been here. They are here. Come on, let's invite them over. Mitty, 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 Punani! 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 Guy Mitty Ramem Taka! Punani! 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 Let's show them around. Guy Mitty Ramem Taka! We are your friends! Friends! Oh, that's a spoon. You see, we use it to eat like this. Mmm. <laughs> this? This is a comb. You use it to comb your hair. Like this. Come, take it. Try it. Ha! <laughs> 
I'll show them the plane. That's a good idea. This is the plane. plane. This is a plane. plane. The plane from the sky. It flies. It Up there. It flies. It's big. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show them the basket. <laughs> yes. It's plain. Look, we were the one who gave you the things. Hey, what's what's going on? Yeah, what's going Pitty, on? Mitty, Mitty, Panamapa. Please stay. Wait. Don't Guy, go. Mitty, Ramen Paka. Where are you going? Hey. Quinani, come back. Panamapa. Quinani. We are your friends. Wait, come again. Guys, wait, wait. Come Ramen back, Quinani. Taka. Don't go. Quinani. Come Quinani. again. <laughs> we finally made contact. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, God. The others need to know about this. I'm going to Radio March. Yes. Oh, God. Jim, how do you feel? I'm tired. Ecstatic. All throughout the day, I've been thanking the Lord for bringing us to this point. Ed. We're at the door. We're at the threshold of something so great. Only God knows. And we need to trust Him completely.
nice and shine. It's a lovely day. Oh. 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 Mm. Any sign of them? No. But I'm sure they'll be back with more of them. Hey, where's Pete and Nate? Oh, they went back to Ariuno to get some more food. I suspect that we might have to do some entertaining tonight. Bitty, Mitty, put him up! Bitty, Mitty, put him up! Guy, Mitty, run him, took her! Bitty, Mitty, put him up! No response. I wonder where they are. They're probably back in the village, giving a report of what happened yesterday. Which reminds me, Ed, about what they had to say about your airplane antic. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> They're coming. Who? They're coming. When we flew over the village just now, we saw only women and children. And further on, we saw a group of men coming our way, guys, in 15 minutes. That's great. This is it, guys. Go. I'm going to radio March. Yes. It's over there. March. Where? This is Nate. They're coming. They're coming. We saw them in the jungle. Looks like they'll be in time for the afternoon service. I'll be con contacting you again at 4.30 p.m. Nate, come on, they're coming! Quick! I see them! I think I see them. Yes, yes, I see them. Winami. Hey, what's going on? What, what are they? Hey, they're coming at us. Let's go. Then let's move out of here. March? He never called? He never misses a call. Oh. I see. Yes. They're all here. Yes. Thank you. We'll be waiting here. Over. They found the plane. It's been stripped of everything. Someone's Coming with the details. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. We have found the bodies of your husband. Blossoms knit in the heart 
sun that sets while rising Life's washed away in love How could it be? How did it come to this? How did the story go? Wrote the script and made it to be such tragedy. How did it go so wrong? Was it a mistake all along? Who played the parts and played them to be? Tragedy. Prayers that go unanswered, promises made unfulfilled, hopes of the faithful are fallen, voices of the brave now still. Can you undo what's done? No turning back the clock that's run. Where is your God and did he foresee such tragedy? Your God promised to be standing to God a vision that seems such fantasy. Where do we go from here? Can we undo the harm that's done? Such tragedy, such fantasy, such tragedy. Daddy coming home. He hasn't been home for a long time. Well, Daddy is not coming home. He has gone to be with Jesus. But why would Jesus let him come home? I miss him. Do you miss him? Yes, Well, I miss you, Daddy. But... Mommy, are you all right? Something is missing, but I am 
Dearest Betty, something most unusual has happened. Two Alka women have appeared at a Quechua settlement near to Arayuno. No one there speaks the Alka tongue, so they've not been able to get much out of them. They do not appear to mean harm. I've sent for Dayuma. You might want to come as well. Your sister in the Lord, Mary Lou Macaulay. Aukas coming out of the jungle. What could they want? This is the Lord's doing. I must go to meet them. Dayuma, have you met them yet? Yes, I could not believe it. They are my aunts, Mintaka and Mankama. I thought they were dead. But why do they come out of the jungle? Mankama, her husband has just died. Mintaka, her daughter has also died. So, they say they want to leave the jungle for a while to see the foreigners. So, they mean no harm? Our women do not kill. They will not hurt anyone. Betty, they ask me to go back with them. Oh, Betty, I must go back to my people. Yes, of course you must. You must come with me, Betty. Come and tell my people about Jesus. Tell them they cannot kill again. Dayuma, your people speared my husband. They will kill me. Betty, you are a woman. They will not hurt you. I'm not sure, Dayuma. I, I don't know. Betty, I have come to know Jesus. And I want my people to know Jesus too. Then, the killing will stop. When I get home, I will tell my people, remember the five white men you killed? One of them was her husband. She's good. She will teach us good things. We will let her stay. But will they trust me? Won't they think that I'm out to take revenge? Then, you must trust me, Betty. Together, we can teach them from God's word. We can tell them you love them. You have forgiven them. They will not be afraid of you. Then, the killing will stop. Come with me, Betty. Why we came to love 
Was I being downright reckless to even consider going back with them? Or was Dayuma right? In the small hours of the morning, as I thought about what such a move could mean, I had to have far more than the word of an Alka woman. I asked the Lord for His word. It came from the book of Nehemiah. You are the Lord. And you have kept your promise. By a pillar of cloud you led them in the day, and by a pillar of fire in the night, to light for them the way in which they should go. You sustained them in the wilderness, and they lacked nothing. He had done it for a people long ago. He could do this for us. I took the words literally. The fact that Jesus died for all makes me interested in the salvation of all. But the fact that Jim loved and died for the Aukas intensifies my love for them. I thank God that he was going to take Valerie and me to the tribe with Dayuma, Mintaka and Mankama. I'm back, and I bring a friend. Remember the five white men you killed on that beach? One of them was her husband. It's okay. It's okay. She's good. She has taught me good things, and. She will teach all of us good things. She wants to come and live with us. We will let her stay. Biti, Miti, Pani Mapa. I am your friend. She's our friend, and we would like to stay. She can have that heart. Thank you. He said, you can have that heart. Oh, you see, they will let you live with us. That's so good. This is your heart. You can sleep on the hammock and Valerie will have her own mat. Dayuma, thank you. Thank you so much. And please let him know that we are so grateful for this. I will do that. And don't be afraid. They will not harm you. We have told them you are our friends. Dayuma, if we were afraid, we would not have come. We know that God is watching over us. Val, look, now that we are here, we will live with them, understand them, and a 
above all, love them. In the days that passed, we learned to live in the jungle. Valerie, in particular, blended into her new environment with ease. At the same time, the Alcas learned from us more about life beyond the jungle. They had never had anyone outside their tribe live with them before. So it was not surprising that some of the things I did were very odd to them. I know they viewed me with some amusement. Val, I'm going to the river to wash our things.
take a look. The children are all ready. Come. I can see that you are ready for the story. Let's see what we are going to study today. We are going to read about a man who loves God, and God asked him to build a very, very big boat. And his name is called Noah. I know exactly where the children are every Sunday morning. They simply love your Bible stories. The Yuma, the children, their hearts are open. But the parents, all in God's time, Betty. Yes, all in God's time. Right. Let's see what we have here today. We lived among the Alcas for two and a half years. In that time, I was painfully aware that socially, I could offer them nothing. The Alcas did not need me. They had their own social structure, their own rules and conventions. I had to ask myself, why am I here? The only answer was a simple one: Jesus Christ, to obey Him, to present Him. Oh, Jesus. 
script could be as far-fetched and yet it's happening how did it turn out right how did the plot change overnight who played the part to turn it around It's happening Dreams that live undaunted Blossoms spring from the vine Sun arising in splendor Stephen Sane, son of Nate Sane, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many years ago, five innocent men were killed on this beach. Jim Elliott, Ed McCulley, Roger Uderin, Pete Fleming, and your father, Nate Saint. I was one of those who plunged a spear into your father's heart. But today, it is only by the grace of the Almighty God and the love of Jesus Christ that I stand forgiven and redeemed. Not only I, but my whole tribe too, we no longer call ourselves the Aukas, savage killers in the jungle. We are the Waoranis, saved by the grace of God. Betty, thank you for bringing Jesus into the lives of my people. Dayuma, Kimu, I did nothing but strive to obey God. So did Jim, Nate, Pete, Ed, and Roger. They were faithful to the very end. It is by their sacrifice that we are what we are today. And God has called us all to Him, to seek Him first in everything, to obey Him without questions, and to love Him above all else. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool, he is no fool who gives what he cannot
Good evening to you. I'd like to thank you for coming for this very powerful presentation of Love Above All. I'm sure many of you will probably have read the book Under the Shadows of the Almighty, or a newer title as Through the Gates of Splendor. Now, this is the story of Jim and Elizabeth Elliot and how they gave their life to serve God through going to the Alka Indians of Ecuador and sharing with them the love of Jesus Christ. In fact, you have heard the song, a very powerful rendition by the Red, uh, the Oka Indian chief, when they sang, Who Are We? You know, it says, You left your world to seek and find us. You took a journey from afar. You came to us in peace and kindness. The door of love you left ajar. Oh, who are we that you should even care? Oh, who are we to die you would even dare? Oh, who are you? Oh, tell us why you came. Oh, who are you who speak the Jesus name? You know, I think this is such a powerful song because who are the Alka Indians that this group of men and women were willing to give up promising careers, you know, comfortable life, a lot of modern conveniences with a great future ahead of them, yet they were even willing to sacrifice their lives for the sake of touching the Alka Indians. Why is it so? I believe it's because of the love of God. You know, who are they? I believe the Alka Indians are more than just savage killers given to hatred, to revenge, to murders, to killings. They are more than that because they're more than just physical beings. You know, all of us are physical beings, physical beings from dust we came and to dust we shall return. You know something about dust? Dust is the most common denominator in the entire universe. You can find dust in a one-room HDB flat. You can find dust in an Indian hut. You can also find dust in Buckingham Palace as well as a White House. Why would God be so concerned about dust? Because beyond this shell that we have is really the soul. You see, the Alka Indians, just like all of us, are made to be eternal beings. You and I have souls. No wonder, as you have heard them saying, for what shall it profit a man if he can gain the whole wide world and yet loses his soul? You see, God is concerned about the souls of men and women, boys and girls, simple and sophisticated, educated or uneducated, rich or poor. God is concerned about the Alka Indians, just as God is concerned about you. You see, in spite of the outward externals, they were given to killings, to murders, to treacheries, to hatred, to revenge. How about us? You may ask, how about us? Are we people with souls too? Yes, you and I are special. Because when God made us, He doesn't just made us from the dust of the earth. He made us with eternity in our hearts. We can either live eternity together with God or eternity without God. No wonder Jim Elliot was the one who, who wrote these very important words. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You know, this physical life is just a shell. One of these days, we have to die. Jim Elliot, Nate, Peter, Roger and Ed, they all died very violent, brutal deaths. But yet, was it worth it all? You know, the antagonistic journalist says, why must it come to this? How did it come to this? You know, it seems like it was a tragedy. You know, the fantasy, the dreams. Well, I believe that it was more than dreams of fantasy. It was reality. It was reality because for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but an everlasting life. You see, Jesus Christ came into a world that is lost in sin and rebellion, a world of selfishness and, you know, a world that is loveless. But yet Jesus came because He desires that we live eternity together with God. The maker and creator of heaven and earth came down so that you and I can have a chance to know this true and living God and to live eternity together with Him. So tonight, I believe it's no accident that you are here. God has brought you here so that you can hear these words of life. You know, this love above all, it is the love of God that causes people like Jim and Elizabeth Elliot to give up everything, including their lives, to live among these Alka Indians. They were willing to sacrifice with the greatest sacrifice of all to give up their lives for the sake of these people because of the souls that each and every one of them possess. I believe that tonight God has brought you here 
so that you will have a chance to hear about His love. It was His love that brought Him down to this earth. C.S. Lewis was the man who says the difference between man's love and God's love is this. The man loves out of an emptiness, the desires to be filled. But God loves out of a fullness, the desires to give away. And I believe that tonight, if you have not been touched by the love of God, then I believe that you really need to come to know this love that God has talked about. And I know that this God, He's right here in this room. He's only a prayer away. And I trust that tonight, those of you who want to trust in Him, you know that He has made you into an eternal being. You can live life together with Him, both now and forevermore. All you need to do is just say this simple prayer with me in your heart. I'd like to invite you to close your eyes and bow your heads as we talk to God in prayer. Oh, great God, thank you for your love that has been so powerfully shown in this musical. For it's more than a musical. It was a real-life story of men and women who gave their all on the altar, who love you to the point of sacrificing their lives for the sake of the souls of these Alka Indians. Today, Lord, we are conscious of the fact that you love us, and there's nothing greater than your love, and you desire that we live life together with you. Oh, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I stand in need of Jesus. Right now, I want to invite Jesus to come into my heart, to be my Lord and my Savior, to write my name in heaven's book of life, and to live life together with me, both now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayers. Thank you. Amen. Well, my dear friends, if tonight we have prayed this very simple prayer, I believe that this is the most important prayer you will ever pray in your life. Well, please tell someone about it. Tell your friend, your relative, or your family members who have brought you here. Or go out there and talk to one of those counsellors, the people with the badge that says counsellor. In fact, there's a room up there. If you go one flight up, or for those of you in the circle seat, you come one flight down, there's a room called Suite 1. You can go there and some people will be glad to spend some time to talk with you. Thank you. God bless and good night.